Hey friends, welcome back to a new vlog, a new week in my life. I'm starting this midweek. Oh, my washing's in the background, that's nice. Um, because my mum was here for the weekend, which was really lovely. I didn't film anything at all, and that was really nice. We just ate and shopped and swam and went out for dinner with my like our closest friends here and introduced my mum to them, which is really nice. It's really funny. Like having friends you meet as an adult and often your parents don't ever meet them because you're like living your own life. So we all went out for a really lovely bougie dinner and got to chatting, which was great. Um, and then I've just been working and recovering because that was quite a lot of, what do you call it? Energy than I normally use in a weekend. And we have another friend, my one of my besties, Ellie, is coming into town on Friday for the weekend, which was not planned for it to be this close together. She'd had a book for ages because she's a teacher, school holidays. Um, but that's gonna be really low key. She's like the most low key, low maintenance person and she loves to read, which is great because we can sit around and do our hobbies in a cafe. And also she can go out on her own on the bike and stuff. So really looking forward to that. Um, but also really looking forward to like a few quiet weekends after that. Um, before we gear up for a trip we're taking over Easter so yeah I thought I would show you the books that I came away from the last weekend with and I also have some yarn to show you but I need to pick up the second bundle to have exciting spring knitting plans um but yeah I, I got my mum bought over two proofs that were posted to my her house for me um the first one is The Spoiled Heart by Sanjeev Sahota, who wrote The China Room, which I think was, I never read it, but it was like Booker listed. Um, and this sounds really intriguing to me. This is sent by Amelia over at Vintage. So thank you, Amelia, if you're watching. Um, oh, comes the matching bookmark. This um, sounded really intriguing. It also like a book that Tom would really like. So it says, um, this actually is a letter from the thing from the editor okay oh, it says nyan keeps seeing helen fletcher around town and on his daily run out into the peaks she's come back to the old house at the end of the lane with her teenage son brandon though nobody seems to remember much about her some trouble at school back in the day a certain defensiveness but nyan is powerfully drawn to her though he doesn't know why he hasn't risked love since he lost his young family in a terrible accident 20 years ago all his energy has gone into work at the union, trying to make the world better, fairer as he sees it, as he would have wanted for his son. And now he's running for the leadership against accomplished newcomer, Megha. It is a huge moment for Nyan, the culmination of everything he believes in. But as he grows closer to Helen and the possibility that their lives may have been connected much more, much more than he thought, he's suddenly threatened. More is suddenly threatened than his chance of winning. A magnificent multi-layered, account of one man an explosively contemporary story of secrets and assumptions i think this is set up north um and yeah like i say following that man and his loss of his family and his work so yeah intriguing then i was sent the real Ama americans by rachel kong i've heard a few people talking about this i haven't read her previous work but i think oh yeah goodbye vitamin was what she wrote and lots of people loved she's born in malaysia raised in california and yeah her work has appeared in lots of different places and i will read you this one this is set on the precipice of y2k an unpaid intern lily chen is attempting to live the american dream in new york city but her scientist parents imagined so much more for her when they fled mao's cultural revolution hoping for a better life Despite the glamour of her media job, she can barely make rent until she forms, falls into the arms of Matthew, a, long, a young financier who can give her the fairy tale life of luxury. High school student Nick and his best friend Timothy are plotting to break free. College promises escape from an isolated, close-knit island community in Washington State. He wants space from his strict and secretive mum and a chance, Lily and a chance to finally fit in. But when Nick sets out to find his long-lost father, a world of questions opens and it's one unexpected member of the Chen family who holds the key to it all. A family epic about identity, sacrifice, choice and fate, wildly imaginative and profound story of betrayal and forgiveness. 
really like this sort of jewel when it's sort of like a, a secret from the past and then you're hearing sort of like the next generation go back and find it really intrigued about that um and Lily's relationship with the young financier reminds me a bit of um Nisha Dolan's first book and also the Mao's China connection reminds me of oh goodness I can't remember what that book's called published by Pushkin but anyway yeah sounds like flavors of books I've enjoyed in the past um and also like I'm really in the mood for a good family saga and this might be one I'm picking up soon this isn't out actually until the 30th of April oh maybe it's one I'll take on our Easter trip but anyway yeah that's the real Americans and then three books we picked up at the bookstore we went to book handle Athenium, I think um just on the edge of the like the nine streets and the Jordan I actually have only recently become a fan of theirs. They have a really good fits collection um, and really quite well stocked in the sort of like curated literary fiction. This is one that Tom chose for himself and I probably will read at some point. It's Colson Whitehead's Crook Manifesto. This is the second in Colson Whitehead's current series, which is about um, Ray Carney, who's like this furniture salesman slash sort of part of the New York underworld at the time. And it's, I think this jumps one decade, perhaps, um, to talk about, yeah, it says it's 1971 and crime is at an all time high. The city is careening towards bankruptcy and a shooting war has broken out between the NYPD and the Black Liberation Army. Amid this collective nervous breakdown, furniture store owner and ex friend Ray Carney tries to keep his head down and his business thriving. His days moving stolen goods around the city are over and he's on the straight and narrow until he needs Jackson five tickets for his daughter and decides to hit up his old police contact. Munson, fixer extraordinaire, but Munson has his own favours to ask of Carney and staying out of the game becomes a lot more complicated and deadly. Yeah, it's very much sort of like a romp, a lot about sort of various black communities in New York at this time of political turbulence and, you know, heightened attacks on, on various different members, like it says, of the Black Liberation Army and it's the fight for racial equality but he does this against the black drop of quite like seedy characters and complicated and sort of morally grey ideas um and I really I know lots of people didn't like his last book but I really enjoyed it and um I think Tom and I will probably read this at some point maybe over the summer and then the books this is another book we sort of chose together because we were desperate to read this and I said in my January radar that I would be buying it Although I just don't know when I'm going to read it because it sounds so effing dark. Like, I don't know when I'm going to feel in the mood to be this depressed. It's called Wild Houses by Colin Barrett. And Colin Barrett is one of my all-time favourite short story writers. He's an Irish writer talking about toxic masculinity in the particularly cultural context of Ireland and sort of their version of machismo and dark lonely vulnerable men on the edge doing really quite depraved things a lot of violence a lot of illegal activity and this book is about two drug dealers and like a small town feud um really excited to read a long form piece of fiction from him like i say he's own this is so long awaited for colin barrett stance um and yeah my friend read it recently and loved it so i know it's going to be good i just don't know when i'm going to be emotionally prepared for how violent this is going to be so it says a beautifully crafted and thrilling told story of two outsiders striving to find themselves as their worlds collapse into chaos and violence the long anticipated novel of a critically acclaimed Colin Barrett so yeah I don't know when I'm gonna want to watch people get beat but we'll see this is another one I actually put in my radar video and I was so happy to see a copy of this is my his the history of my sexuality by Toby Lapmaker definitely more something I'm interested in reading at this moment in time. This is translated from the Dutch, which is why I was so interested in it. And it follows the story of a 20 something in Amsterdam, the freedoms, complications of coming out and going it alone. She's proficient, proficient in literature and philosophy, trying her hand at Russian, but in love and sex, she has a lot to learn. I think it's about yeah, a young queer woman, Sophie, trying to find herself. I think she falls in love with yeah, her recruitment consultant. Um, and yeah, I think it would be quite, 
effervescent and fun and rompy, but asking some interesting questions and set in Amsterdam. So like, I will, I know I will enjoy that part of it. At least it's translated by Kirsten. Oh, the sticker's covering it. But anyway, yeah, I think this will be, I'll read this one much sooner than the other two. In terms of what I'm reading right now, I'm partway through The Raptures by Jan Carson. It's going quite slowly. I'm not sure why, I'm just like really into my knitting at the moment, so I'm not really in the mood to pick it up. And it's a lot about illness, so sometimes that's not what you want to read last thing before bed. And I'm really trying to like, I'm on a mission to sleep better. Um, and I don't know if this book is helping in that mission. Um, but I am really enjoying it, it has a really interesting religious context. So it's about a young girl, Hannah, a namesake of mine. And she is the only girl in the class or the only person in her small primary class to not get hit by this mystery illness, um, which they are, it's like a small rural town near, it's like near a city, but which city? I can't remember. Um, so it's temper simmer and panic escalates, long buried secrets threaten to emerge in the village. Hannah's family are deeply religious, but like in a charismatic Christian way, like believe in like deliverance and exorcisms, which is very sort of out of place for the religious practices of the time in rural Ireland and the um, sort of, yeah, they're definitely seen as like the black sheep of the community in terms of that. And then when this mystery illness strikes, people have different approaches to why Hannah is not sick. Um, and yeah, so the religious element is definitely hooking me, but the just like all the children dying is a bit bit intense you know so i'm not sure it's like not oh i don't want to dnf it because it is good but maybe i just need to bring something else into the mix actually maybe i should keep reading the violence of a murderer that book i started last year that's yeah actually i'm gonna do that instead so i will continue reading reading a thread of violence which i put in a vlog ages ago and i stopped reading because it wasn't very festive and i didn't want to take it back to the uk because it was hardback and it's just been languishing ever since but actually this has given me motivation actually that's not a book to read at bedtime either why are my books so dark um okay but maybe it'll just be like something to mix in for difference on audio i started the body friend by Catherine branson is it that australian fiction which was really nice but I just haven't found in been in the mood to listen to audiobooks to be honest I haven't really been listening to it but maybe I'll do that this afternoon I was gonna go knit in a cafe I normally go with my friend but she's away but I could still do that by myself I'm a big girl um so yeah that's the reading updates I need to go to the high street anyway to pick up my yarn and a light bulb it's all happening on my day off very wild so I shall see you with yarn and more updates on perhaps a thread of violence. but I crashed first before <laughs> after work. I wanted to show you a yarn haul. I, oh, firstly, I knitted the tiniest little baby hair. My friend had her little girl and she's very small, which I should have guessed because my friend is tiny. Um, and so I wanted to, I've just been like using up scraps and I knitted this tiny, oh, you can kind of see the, the joggler stripe fluff on that side about doing this um it's so cute this is merino wool by drops and some leftover camera rose snuff neg um i loosely followed the pal soho free ribbed classic hat pattern but the oh God, it could literally be a mitten <laughs> um but the gauge wasn't right because i was missing with heavier weight yarn but yeah Really cute, I'm gonna put that in a package for her. And then, oh, I broke broken nail. I started a ribbed hat for myself, well, for me and Tom, out of some leftover drops Nepal that I bought 
to make another rose Esker hat, which is that red one that I made and that green one I made for my friend Kev. But I was kind of bored when I was halfway through knitting my friend Kev's one, so I was like, oh, do you know what? I actually don't really want to make that. So I'm gonna knit, I'm gonna put inspo picks up for you actually. These are kind of my spring knitting plans. But yeah, um, I'm gonna knit like a thick striped blue and navy. This is like off-white gray. One of that, that's like my handbag project, my watching telly project. So we'll probably get a lot of knitting on that um, this weekend while my friend's in town. Um, and then I started the Lonely Leftovers vest, which is ironic because it's meant to be, not meant to, but like they suggest using scrap yarn to make it, but I just fell in love with the pattern and really wanted to make something, so I've just started it. Um, so I'm using this new yarn brand out of France called, well it's made in Italy, hold on. A brief interruption because Tom's in the Apple store trying to get my airpods fixed um yeah this new french brand of yarn that's made in italy called i'm just filming slow no just me marjo i'm not sure how you would say that um i want i followed them on instagram for ages and i really wanted to follow them i think they're really well priced for like a more um small batch dyer um and i really wanted to buy more yarn like that this year but i find some of the like indie brands that people recommend just aren't really my colors like they're very like neon or like lots of speckled or variegation and like they're just not really my style um so because i'm in my heart i'm kind of a neutral gal but like i like an interesting neutral so anyway with the lonely leftovers vest i'm doing my own sort of variegation you can see i've just started to blend the second color so i'm this is what mine's gonna look like this is wheat this is nougat and this is brownie i think i'm holding it triple actually this is the fine merino wool it's super soft feels super nice really nice ply to it and this um it's knitting garter so this has such a nice bounce to it that i'm really really enjoying um and yeah i'm gonna this is gonna be like the back panel and then it's trimmed or i'm trimming it with i think this is pistachio yeah beautiful green so it's like browns with a green trim this is definitely like a longer project and it's quite fiddly already because of the three strands and then having to variegate it like you're blending in one color quite slowly um but yeah i'm excited to work on it so that's definitely a home project because it's like comes out of this box but also from majo i treated myself to some mohair i got three this is the pearl mohair electric blue vanilla and oatmeal these also kind of these look boring but this goes with it but I wear that super over sized white scrunchie all the time so I was like oh let me make a really colorful mohair scrunchie but actually I think I'm when I was like thinking about the ones I use the most the hair accessories they are neutral so I'm gonna do these as a stripe with like a really thin electric blue trim I'll show you a picture of the inspo I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to do the long ribbon yet. That's what I fell in love with, but I'm not sure if I might do one scrunchie and then do a ribbon scrunchie thing separately. Um, so that's what I got from there. Then I just ordered some drops air because my one of my best friends who came to visit requested a balaclava, like that stripy one I made. So I got the yarn to make that for her because I'm very kind. And then... I'm going to my like spring project. I think I'm going to take on the trip we're taking because it's going to be little, even though it's going to be hot on holiday. This is little. I'm going to make my friend's little girl a cardigan in like age six months. So she'll be able to, she's tiny as well. So she'll be able to wear it like all next winter. Um, this is the inspo vibe. I wanted to obviously make it cream, but like baby's not practical. This is super wash, so it can be machine wash which is good this is the drops merino extra fine and i'm doing it in the base color green and then i'm gonna trim the neck in blue and a little cuff in pink and i just think these are such a cute color combo together really sweet like some little wooden buttons and i'm excited to work on my first raglan baby card again never made one of those before but that's gonna be i think the project i work on on the trip we're taking because i'm obviously not going to take this with me and I probably will work on a hat and stuff but 
yeah, I'm really excited for all this knitting. It has really impacted my reading though. I won't lie to you, but um, it's good. We can have multiple hobbies. I think I need to find my audiobook stride again because I listen to a little bit more of Body Friends, but honestly, it's like almost too close to home, if that makes sense. Like it's saying things about pain and bodies and friendship that feel so near to my heart that it kind of hurts which I know is like a beautiful feeling to get from a book but like it's almost too intense um because it feels like it's like circling my own mind it's kind of wild but um yeah I am enjoying it and it's a short book so I should just power through and then I need to pick up a more rompy I think I might listen to What's that one everyone talked about, about the, like, woman in the Indian village who, like, murdered her husband and then goes around helping other people murder their husbands? Bandit Queens. <laughs> it came to me. Might listen to that one, or Your Driver Is Waiting, like, something along those lines. A little campy, a little fun. Um, so, yeah, that's the plan so far. You'll probably now see a montage of me and my friend hanging out, eating, knitting, snacking. We are going to go to the sauna, actually, so you might see a nice sunset. I'll probably catch up with you after the weekend. Oh my god, so <laughs> Once again had to put down the camera after during a pretty bad crash and I've kind of forgotten to share about it in the process which I know a lot of you relate to but sometimes it's hard to pick up the camera when you're just trying to survive um but I had a very nice time with my friend who came to visit um but felt pretty exhausted afterwards and honestly I just think exhausted by the year so far just feels like there's so much to handle so many decisions that need to be made about health and plans and the future and just adult stuff I want to keep avoiding so it's been a hard week it's Friday when I'm recording this and it has been a struggle my pain's been kind of out of control which always frustrates me I feel like I don't really know what to do with myself when you know all the strategies that you put in place and the management techniques just aren't working and it's all about control but so it's so much of illness is about letting go of that control because your body starts feeling like your own a lot of the time and I think that's causing me some confusion almost because these seemingly random flares and pain attacks come out of nowhere and you search so hard to try and find a cause even though you know deep down that there really isn't one sometimes I think this year so far I just struggle to feel like myself and which feels like a strange thing to say because nothing's really changed I've still done all the things that last year me liked to do and I've appeared and performed in the same way that I have with my friends and family but it does feel like a performance and when I step away from those social situations I feel kind of empty I was trying to explain this the other night to my boyfriend Tom but I just don't feel like me and I don't like the way that I am or that I feel right now. I feel like my temper's got shorter, my frustrations have got stronger, my ability to deal with complicated and hard decisions or situations is getting worse. Everyone says that like the longer you deal with something, the sort of easier you find it or the more adaptable we are as humans. But I actually think it's harder the longer you live with illness and the longer you have to sort of put up with your body being so detached from your mind I think it's really thrown me through a loop this year and I no longer know what bit of me is me and what bit of me is controlled by illness part of it is definitely medication that's got mental health side effects but it's quite strange to explain to someone that you don't feel like yourself because to them you're still presenting as you and you're acting and feeling and performing in ways that you can't attach yourself to and it doesn't feel true to the you that you know and I think I'm really struggling to get back to that part of me and I'm still doing the same things I've done before but it doesn't feel it's not bringing me comfort or joy or 
I just feel quite, I guess, disassociated. <laughs> it's hard to say, but I guess if this makes sense to any one of you and you're also struggling at the moment, then I see you and I feel you and I hope for all of us that we can find our way back to the small bits of life that make us feel like us.